All right, everybody, this is part three of a five-part series. We're talking about inverters and batteries and kind of a beginner's things to consider or understand if you're looking to maybe go down the road of a DIY system and uh, of inverters, or if maybe you want to talk to an installer and have somebody pay somebody to install one for you. This is going to give you that base level of knowledge so you understand what you're talking about. You can talk intelligently with people or maybe jump all in on a DIY system of your own. So with that in mind, Video number one was components and high-level concepts. Video number two was about calculating watts and understanding what your daily needs would be so that you can size your system appropriately. This video is gonna be about parallel versus series, and then we're gonna move into video number four is gonna be actually kind of hooking some things up. We'll talk about some US codes and things to consider with RV regulations, sailboat industry regulations, and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll actually hook everything up um, on top of that, we'll also be talking about wire sizing in that video. And then video five, I'm just going to end it with kind of a, uh, I want to talk about a low budget system, kind of a medium budget system like what we have here, and then a high dollar system like the Victron you see behind me, and getting into that kind of an ecosystem and how that stuff kind of all plays into it. So those videos, videos are coming. Um, check those out. They're, it's going to be good stuff. But for now, let's talk about parallel versus series. So I uh, apologize for my, my crude drawing here, but it, it illustrates a point. Um, each of these black boxes, this, this, there's two rows. There's parallel on top and a series set up on bottom. And these represent our metal case batteries that we have back here. Um, these are, of course, lithium batteries. So um, that comes into play, the fact that they're lithium, when, we start, when we're going to talk about voltages. So uh, parallel, when we put batteries in parallel, we're talking about keeping the voltage the same or 12 volts. Nominally speaking, we're going to say 12.8 volts, and that's going to come into play in a minute when we when we move into the next system. But just know these these voltages are kind of interchangeable. If you're looking at this stuff on the internet, or you start digging deeper into this, you're going to see 12 and 12.8 pretty frequently, especially with lithium, because that's the nominal voltage of a lithium battery. So if you take the the at the, the middle voltage on a charge curve for lithium, it's about 12.8 volts, and so that's why people refer to it as 12.8 nominal voltage. So in a parallel system, you're keeping the system at 12 volts. And the way you do that is you just connect all the positives together and you connect all the negatives together like you see here. And then you connect from one end of the, of the bank, you connect to your load, and then the negative from the other end, you connect to your load. A lot of people will take the positive and the negative from this battery and connect it to their load, um, to the positive and negatives on the load. But you don't wanna do that because then you're gonna pull from this battery first more from this battery and it's gonna the, the whole bank is gonna discharge unevenly. If you go positive over there to negative over here, it keeps the bank more evenly discharged um, or it will discharge more evenly. All right, so with this, what does parallel give you? It gives you more amps. So for every battery you add to your system, you add that much more capacity. So if this is a 100 amp battery is the max you can max current you can draw from this battery. If you put add three more on, well, now you can pull 400 amps, 400 amps of current from there. So if one battery isn't enough to supply an inverter, let's say you have a 1500 watt inverter, or I'm sorry, uh, an inverter that pulls 150 amps and you only have a 100 amp battery, well, you're not going to be able to utilize all of the capacity of that inverter. So adding a second battery puts you at 200 amps, and now you can supply the full amount of current that that inverter would need. So that's the main reason people will put batteries in parallel or they'll add a battery on later. They'll start with one, they'll maybe add one later and throw it in parallel. You'll hear, hear people say that a lot. So what's the, what, why would you wanna to go to series? What's the, well, let's talk about how you set up series first. Setting up series is going from positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and you just go across like that. With each battery you add, it doubles, or it adds that amount of voltage. Up here, we were adding more capacity. Down here, we're adding more voltage in this case. You're also adding more capacity, but um, you're adding, the voltage is, is increasing as you go there. So the reason I pointed out 12.8 above is because now if you multiply 12.8 times four, you get 51.2. So if you're looking around on the internet, you might see 51.2 volts on inverters, or you might see some higher than 51 numbers saying, charge voltage is like 56 volts or 57 volts. And you're like, whoa, 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 I got a 48 volt system. I can't mess around with that stuff. Well, sometimes you are gonna see bigger numbers because of the fact that it's 12.8 volts. And that also it charges at 14.4 to 14.2 to 14.6. So you multiply those before you can get some, some pretty crazy numbers out there. And since this video is in the line of just kind of putting stuff out there for you to maybe consider and looking at more going down the road, or at least have that base level of knowledge 
from. Now you can go explore that more if you want to learn more about the voltages and lithium and charging them and all that kind of stuff. But the biggest advantage of going series is that you can use smaller wire sizes. You'll hear that a lot, especially if you're talking to installers or your buddies, you'll say, oh, I got a 5,000 watt inverter. And you'll say, oh, you want with a 48 volt, I bet to keep the wire sizing down, right? And you'll, you'll hear people say that a lot. So if you have to, I'll start with wire sizing or is, is rated by how much current it can carry. So this wire could carry, and I'm just gonna throw a number out. Let's say this wire can carry 100 amps maximum. Well, then you can't pull 400 amps through it. You couldn't use this in your system. If you wanted to be able to pull 400 amps, you'd have to get some pretty, some pretty crazy thick cable. It is out there and you can absolutely do it. Um, but just know that if you go to a series, well, now this cable would be good enough for 100 amps um, continuous draw on it, which is the most you can get in series. So like I said, you increase the voltage in series, but the amps stay the same. So if you put four 100 amp hour batteries together, then they can each pull 100 amps. And so you're, you're gonna increase the voltage across, you're gonna multiply the voltage times four, but the amps stay the same. Whereas it's different with parallel, you keep the voltage the same, but you multiply the amps. So that's the key difference between the two. Um, you just know that if you wanna go dig on that some more and try to understand series versus parallel and how you double voltage or you double amps, but you don't do both, um, then I encourage you to go kind of explore that some more. All right, last thing I wanna talk about is the uh, what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna put these in parallel. And the reason we're gonna do that is because I've intentionally left this battery a little bit lower than the others. And so it's down right here, maybe right now. And if you've got these batteries, if one's lower than the other, once you put them in series, when it comes down, when this one hits the bottom, it'll hit before this one. Well, that's unused capacity that you're leaving out on the table here. And over a long period of time, we're talking years, uh, it's, it's unhealthy for the batteries to do that. And one of them's gonna kind of prematurely be reduced capacity over the other one. So, or maybe they're both gonna end up with less you know, lifespan on them. But you just don't wanna do that. What you wanna do is you, when you put them in parallel, when you put them like this, they can basically equalize out and they'll level out real nicely across the four of them. And we're gonna see that when we put them in parallel, you can actually see electrons flowing into this battery. It'll look like it's charging on the, on the app. We're gonna pull up the app and look at that and we'll see it'll actually look like it's charging this battery from this, these three batteries, um, which is pretty cool until they're equalized. And then once they're equalized, then you can put them in a series configuration. A lot of people get that wrong. We've had several customers that didn't know that they needed to do that. And they wrote back and said, hey, my, ba my batteries are dying in like an hour, what gives? And we say, did you charge them up first all and get them all up to 12 volts, you know, fully charged and then equalize them? And they say no, and they do that and then they're, you know, everything's good. So uh, if you do go series, just be aware you gotta put them in parallel first to let them equalize, typically 24 hours, but we're not gonna wait that long today. We're gonna get them close and then we'll go ahead and put it into the system because this isn't gonna be a permanent solution here. This is just for demonstration. Okay, all right, with that said, let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and start hooking these up with the wires. I'm gonna put another camera over here so we can get a shot of that. I'll talk through it and then, uh, and then we'll come back. All right. Get some All right. These are all on there. So what I want to do now is I'm going to pull up the app and I apologize for the cracked screen. I actually dropped the battery on this phone yesterday. So um, I'm working on getting a new one today. Anyway, this is not what we're looking at here. Let's go down. So we're gonna turn the Bluetooth on on each of these so we can see them pop up in here. And you'll see them pop up as one through four. And we have number four down on the end here. So I wanna pull that up and keep an eye on the charge discharge as we put this on here. Okay, we got it pulled up now. I'm gonna put that on there and watch. You can see it's charging at 20 amps. I think you can see that. Um, shows over there, 15, it's already coming down, 13. So they're equalizing right now. I know it says 100% on the screen, but it's not, that's not 100% accurate. So now we're down to 11 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this on and we're gonna let them sit there for a little while. Here we go, four and it's charging at 7.6 amps now. So it's probably gonna settle out somewhere around six amps and then it'll sit there for an hour or two and eventually they'll be, they'll be all equalized. All right, so they, oh, sorry. 
So they are equalizing. This one's down to about seven amps now, and it's still dropping there, 6.8, 6.9, 6.8, 6.9. So it's gonna start coming down. I'm gonna let these sit for a couple hours, and then once they're pretty equalized out, we'll go ahead and put them in a series configuration and we can see what that looks like on here. All right. All right, so we now have them in a series configuration. And if we take our little multimeter here and we touch the terminals for the positive and one for the negative, we can see we get, oops, not on voltage. We're reading 53.27 volts. So right, that's right about where we want to be. So we know we're connected up properly. You can see that it's, like I said, we're going to end up doing positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. And then from our load, from our inverter over here, we're going to connect the positive here, the negative here, and we'll be set up and it'll turn on and everything should be working as expected. We're going to do that in the next video. Like I said, that'll be video number four is actually, we're going to talk about wire sizing first, some code stuff, and then we'll actually hook them up. So. That video is coming up next. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. We appreciate it. It helps the algorithms and other people find these videos that might be looking for them. If you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. Do my best to answer everything that comes in. And if I can't answer them, I'll point you towards a resource that you can use to, to answer that question. And lastly, consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon. You'll get notified when we do future videos. We got some RV installs coming up and some we're going to go a lot deeper on the GrowWatt because I really, really like what they're doing. Um, not sponsored, not affiliated, but I really like what GrowWatt's doing. So I want to I want to do some more deep diving on that. And we'll talk a little bit about that in video five as well. Um, other than that, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.